it will be around and it will be cool. But obviously, we need to break into more people. Hi, and welcome back to Airsoft Action TV. I'm Tom Anvil Hibbard. And I'm Phil Bucknell. And today we're going to talk about the KWA KM4 CQB that Phil reviewed in one of the recent issues of Airsoft Action. Yeah, it was a nice little gun. A uh, little bit above starter package pricing, I, shoot, I think, but. Uh, Solid little shooter. Yeah, so they retail about something like 220 to 240, something, yeah, like, something like that in the UK. That. Yeah, what I found quite interesting, in a world which is full of recoils and stop on empty and MOSFETs yeah. and all sorts of high tech and res rails and all sorts <clears> of <throat> high tech jiggery pokery, this is a real kind of basic, simple, get it straight out the box and use it kind of gun. It's a proper throwback yeah. to uh, sort of thing we used to use. Airsoft in the yeah. 90s, really, you know, where you could have any colour as long as it was black, black. Yeah. and any foregrip as long as it was plastic. For some people, this would be this would be horrifically scary, wouldn't some it? Some people have probably never seen that. <laughs> and, uh, and, a, and a front sight and post. A, and a proper front sight post. Which yeah, is, um, it doesn't fold down. Which is actually partly what really attracts me, because I love this. This, this is such the, cla the classic. It's, it's an iconic silhouette, isn't it? Classic AR silhouette profile. It is. So the gearbox in these is not what you do, not what a lot of people get and get with these days with all the electronic triggers and MOSFETs and all sorts of stuff and micro switches, which actually cause to me actually to, can cause quite a lot of problems. I think in some guns there's certainly more trouble than there worth. And look at some of the um, the earlier examples. I won't name manufacturers, but you know it was always the micro switch. Well, I've had one that's had two micro two micro switches exactly. replaced. So I'm kind of so I was actually looking for something really solid really reliable was a bit of a backup gun and 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 something which is just going to run with a really conventional trigger in it because mm. actually what i was thinking about doing is putting a gate titan into it and they, they need a so we're taking the nice starter gun and ripping well, that it was all kind out. of so my bent on it is actually it's a really great basis to make something that you really want yes you could also do it as a actually a really solid Gonna look after <clears> you reliable starter gun as well and just leave it well i nearly bought it after yeah. the review so I was that taken with it, and you know I love my recoil rifles, and yep. not the Tokyo Marui ones that everybody else seems to favour, but yeah, like the, the KWAs. Yeah. I think they're much more reliable, less more solid, um, <clears throat> they're a lot easier to work on well, internally. Something I did want to talk about, you mentioned solid, mm. these are extremely nice, the up and low receiver yeah. are lovely. I think you could beat a Rhino to death with one of these and then go and play a game yeah. afterwards. Compared to some other brands, which we won't mention. Yeah. Certainly the yeah the upper and lower receiver are really really solid. There's lovely yeah. there's lovely forging markings. If you know anything about this, if you get really nerdy, the forging markings are all correct. It's just got a nice finish. Everything looks like it's been finished with care and attention. Yeah. You know, for a, a cheap gun, it looks like a gun that costs twice as much. It doesn't feel like it. it certainly doesn't feel like a cheap gun. It's obviously. rock solid. It's got a good weight to it. Yeah. Um, for me. For somebody starting out, I think it would be a fantastic investment. And then as they get more into it, you know, you can bolt a Riz rail on or a free float rail. Yeah, and you can get you the one can, you want, can't you? Because yeah. the, this is just a plastic handguard. It's not exactly. cost a KWA load of money. Um, you can put whatever, you, whatever, whichever direction you want yeah. to go. You want to keep it retro or go more modern. If you want to keep it sort of classic, you can just drop on a, a Knight's Armament style Raz Riz rail that you have there. Uh, and go for the the classic CQBR look. This is yeah. So um, yeah, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, or you actually, yeah, I, I ran it with just a little red dot on at a game, mm. and it was great. So no messing around. I did I did have a couple of problems. I think this the, this isn't the standard stock. This is one off uh, New Prong. Yeah. Because I couldn't get my standard nunchuck batteries into. Yeah, the, the stock's a bit thin. So you may have to if you have a think. It may be worth measuring the size of the stock and your batteries and just seeing if that would be a problem for you. Yeah. And I did have a bit of an issue with some mags, which I didn't quite like. Yeah. Um, but again, <clears throat> that's something for you, you can have a look at. Yeah. Uh, obviously the stock, actually talking about mags, the, the one they provide is lovely. It's it is nice, yeah. I mean, it took me a while to get used to it because I'm, I'm used to the Erg mag. So I was yes. sitting there waiting, the, the thing's not popping out the top. It's not a thing I've broken the magazine. <laughs> And then I remembered it, it's not recoil here. Yeah, but it's really they're really solid. But for a plastic mag, it's got some weight to yeah. it. You know, so it, it, it doesn't feel flimsy. And I I dropped them on the floor I, more I, than once when I was doing yeah. 
reloads and I know. did the same I was chucking it around and then you got your hands on it and it still looks like a new <laughs> mag yeah well, I've put so another thing you talked about in your review was the hop mm. which you were struggling with a bit <clears> weren't you yeah I, I think all the rifles I've had that are KWA the hop has been its Achilles heel okay um, whether it's just because they tend to make them for a market which allows more power and they just can't hop at the lower okay, power that makes we're sense. used to. Yeah, that makes sense. So I tend to, if I swap anything, yeah. and, and I really, really have a, a bit of a chip on the shoulder when I see people go, I've just got a new rifle, I'm what should I upgrade? It. Yeah. It's like, nothing. Just run put it. Put some batteries in it, put a mag in it, and go and play it, and then, you know, take it from there. Yeah. Upgrade it as things break. But the hop rubber is something that I so do you tend to... our power levels, actually, nothing actually, it's a really good point. Yeah. Nothing actually wrong with the gun. It's just it's, no. made, it's made for 400 FPS. It's made for 400, and 430 not, FPS, and, it's and, not doing and at that. that speed, you know, I think that hot rubber yeah. will perform really, really well. Because you never see these problems on, say, the American. No, when Facebook they no, when they review it, they never no. talk about it. Yeah, no. Um, so I'm going to put a Prometheus purple in there. I've just done that with my <laughs> my ergs. So there you go. Um, Though it did get better, so I put I've done I've mm. put about six thousand rounds through this now, yeah. and it got <clears> it, it was going out to forty five fifty, which let's face it, it's about normal. You know that's that's not a bad engagement range, no. and for two hundred quid, for most for most airsoft, so, and actually I felt, I was playing at skirmish Nottingham with it, um, and actually I had I had an upgraded AG with me, mm. and I almost felt like it was a bit dirty, so <laughs> that, it was actually quite nice playing with something that put me more put me a bit more yeah. I mean, this took me back to my early days yeah. airsofting, you know, when when coal power was still a thing. And, <laughs> Everything was made of plastic. And you had to change the batteries just as often as you changed the magazines. So it was, so it was really nice. And it, it did, I, I wondered how I'd feel about yeah. it because I've moved on from this, or I thought I had. But no, I was I was seriously tempted to buy the, the review gun and keep it either as a loaner for people who want to try out airsoft or to start, you know, just building up over time yeah. into something else. So, so we already kind of talked about the one of two things, leave it, run it, run it till it breaks. It is absolutely perfect Brilliant. just to pick up and shoot. Yeah. You have um, a problem. I'm going to do something a bit different with this, working okay. with JTAC. This is on loan from J from John it at is. JTAC. Yeah. Not on loan because I'm about to buy it off him. We're going to turn this into a fairly late Mark 18 Mod Zero. Nice. Which will be lovely, and he's going to do. And John does a great service, and we're going to take the KWA trades off. Yeah, he's good at that. He was, he's brilliant at, and we're going to put a full set of Mark <coughs> II Mod, Mod Zero tr trades on. That'll look nice when it's done. It'll look lovely, yeah. So, so I've started collecting a few bits. You know, got CAC rear sights, and um, actually that's a Marui, Marui MWS rail. It's a lovely surefire can. So you're basically doing what we've just said not to do. Yeah, not to do. Of course. Yeah. And actually, I wrote an article about that. <laughs> yes, called, I remember. Called the Naked yeah. Gun, which basically says buy a gun, leave it, and enjoy yeah. it. And I'm going to break those rules because. But there's a very specific gun that I want, and actually no one makes it. So, an M4. <laughs> don't, don't get me going on M4s. <laughs> um, so we're going to do that with this gun. Phil, thanks for coming in. No problem. That's awesome. We're Thank gonna, you for having Phil me. back in a few more times. I've been Tom Anvil Hibbard, and I've been Phil Bucknell. See you next time. <laughs>